Hey everybody, this is Rob Goth here, the ET Whisper, and welcome to the ET Whisper YouTube channel. Hey everybody, Rob Goth here back for the third installment of the um, weekly Galactic Channeling. I'm always used to saying monthly. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the last two weeks. If you didn't see the first week, we really tell what we're going to be doing for the rest of this year. I'm going to really put more energy into this channel this year. We really appreciate all the support and love that we've gotten from you guys. Feel free to subscribe, ring the bell on the notifications so you get an email every time we upload, every time we share something, every time we do anything, and go check our social media, especially our Facebook. Uh, add me to your personal Facebook because I'm really active there uh, and I really share a lot of my own in-depth thoughts if you're excited about that. If you just enjoy the channeling, enjoy week number three of the Galactic Weekly, not Monthly, channeling. Love you guys. Greetings to all, this is Ardif, that is A-R-I-D-I-F, and this is its spell. We understand that you are engaging in your third aspect of your weekly galactic channeling. But before diving into this construct, the two things in which we have always expressed, the first, above and beyond all things expressed within this day, to know, feel, and to perceive that you are loved and our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is both in our greatest excitement and within that greatest excitement that we co-create with you in this moment through all your linear time. We wish to express via request of all of the entities that co-create in this moment a desire of introduction for the entities that we bring forward. The entity that we bring forward today is coming from the star system that all of you know as a Sirius B, and this entity brings forward its own representation of desired co-created communication with Earth. These beings are the entities that exist in fifth density Sirius B as the humanoid version of the co-created collective energy. They bring forward not only great understanding of humanity as they have worked with humans for thousands of years, but also their own knowledge in the advancement of their own race. One moment we will connect you. We first start by introductions. Delau is the name of my specific race, and Dion is my own personal name. We understand how important introductions can be for humans to associate the energy. Now we now know that this human being is named Rob. We know that this human being is named Kalina. We know that the entity who shared a connection is Aradif, and you are the general human earth creation. Introductions now are done, so we will start with the main body of our sharing. Human beings have gone through great shifts in the last uh, several tens of thousands of years. One of the shifts that's not talked about by historians on your planet and not talked about many times by other humans is the time shift between your DNA change of reptilian, earth reptilian, and Syrian B DNA. This is a time period that was over um, 160,000 years of your past. There was an initial DNA shift inside of your collective with humans. 
At this point you had already been changed by Anunnaki beings who had reptilian DNA <clears throat> and who had Pleiadian DNA. After that, the shift from Elohim and other Pleiadian races. After that, Andromedan. After that, Octurian. After that, humanoid races in which names you don't know. And after that, the intervening of Earth reptilian DNA. This was placed by reptilian race that was connected to Earth reptilians. And this was be because of the human interaction with higher dimensional energy, creating interference with Earth reptilians' experiences. They did not care for that, so brought in their own friends who worked with geneticism. They desired to implement their DNA into humans so that humans would be more aware of the reptilian interference that was happening from their perspective. When that shift changed, human beings became very unstable. Each change brought levels of stability and levels of instability. The reptilian energy was already placed in humans before. This was giving them a double dose of reptilian energy. And although humans carry much reptilian energy, at that time they were not qualified to hold that type of energy in their DNA. At first it was only a small group of several thousand humans who carried the new gene. And just like many other genetic changes, certain races believed that the last version of humans shouldn't exist. When they came in to eradicate that version of humans from reptilian races, humans stood up. This caused miniature fights and conflicts. But eventually, the other humans began to intermate with the newly upgraded humans. This is where Syrian B relatives of our own humanoid beings that are classified as type 2 by your classification system of consciousness and behavioral energy then shifted into the Earth Collective and shared their DNA with every human on Earth. They did this by lacing water with bonding agencies of DNA manipulations. This is very similar to mutative DNA, natural DNA shifting energy. If your planet became too radioactive, many would die, but the ones who lived would then mutate to whole genes who could handle radioactivity. This happened with water supplies on Earth to mutate the energy to accept Syrian genes. And because the Syrian energy was higher dimensional, there was almost no resistance at all. Those being shifted the entire DNA fluctuation on Earth. This energy is important to tell you because many beings who share the channeled information with humans will not tell you this. This tends to bring more questions than answers or fears depending on what type human you are. If you're a fearful being who is afraid of all the changes that happen and can bring anxiety based fears. If you are a being who is stronger with resistance against anxiety but is overly mental in the state of the way you process information, it can bring you more questions than answers. Our perspective is that having more questions than answers is not harmful to humans. In fact, we believe this is one of the things that humans can do to grow themselves into better humans. When you have more questions than you do answers initially, you start investigating everything involved with that subject. 
and a spider effect of webs going out from that one subject, you'll start asking questions about multiple subjects. When receiving answers, you will keep asking different choices of questions and different energies. And what then will happen? You will begin to know more and more than ever before. We don't see how this can be bad for humans. The question itself is the energy of perpetuation of knowledge and empowering strength. This energy of us sharing with you is an additional knowledge which will give you more questions than the one answer of how you receive Syrian DNA than ever before. This will lead you to ask more questions, receive more answers, to learn and spider webbing out in growth. The consideration of the desire to tell you came as a choice of a collective energy. Our whole collective agreed that this would be beneficial for you. We thank you for the time. We now release the energy and give back the uh, creating energy power of concentration to our, our diff. Thank you, friend. Goodbye.